Yesterday's price is not today's price. Give me a second. I'm trying to select the appropriate weapon. Uh, watch where you stepping. Them snakes all around you. You know they connected, uh When I was a kid, my grandmama told me I can't go to heaven So I stopped praying and asking for blessings And started preparing for my I'ma get it Got nothing to lose, I'm all in Walking the edge, don't fall in Enough of the lies, don't apologize I don't understand, are you for in? This is the place, this is the site Grab all your people and log in I'm waiting, don't care how long it's gonna take Ho oh, ho, and that's what's up right there. What's up, what's up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome back in live, back in action for another edition, gaining traction on the road to week one, where the fun will begin with the Bills or the Rams win. Whether you're a Miami Dolphin or an Atlanta Falcon, if you root for the Colts or the Bolts, the third and three podcast is here taking notes like the podcast goats that we are. It is time to earn your votes with another fun filled football show with the names you know my co-host and i will be calling the opening day game yes it's coming close just a couple of weeks away three weeks away as a matter of fact calling the rams versus the bills opening day i guarantee this will be the most genuine unique broadcast you'll ever hear in your entire life it's going to be amazing tricky nikki gist the first lady of sports podcasting is going to be there as the anchor doing what she does, calling crazy plays, cursing her head off. I can't wait. It's going to be so much fun. That's what I do best, Jay. Curse, lose my mind, argue with you. You know, just a typical Good girl. Wednesday. There you go. That's yeah. right. That's right. Well, that will be on a Thursday, so we'll see if she's in a better mood, D. You know, yeah, you are the king of the sports. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, if the Giants win, she's in a good mood. So we'll hopefully call a few of those games. But um, yeah, Dean, back in the house, my man. How you feeling? How you feeling? What's good? Happy Wednesday to you. Hey, man, feeling good. You know, Wednesday night, able to come in and get this therapy, as you call it, with you guys yeah. and talk some football. There's nothing better than that. So I'm always ready, you know, ready and willing to go. That's what's up right there. That's what I'm talking about. All right. We are ready to go. My name is Jason Thierman, a.k.a. The Sports Prophet, and the third and three podcast is presented by Frankie Fear of the Sports Column and brought to you by Reebok. Great deal on classic shoes. Get Reebok Rewind shoes for just $39.99. That's less than some gas prices, baby. So use that promo code Rewind at checkout. Get dope discounts on Reebok gear by going to 3rd3podcast.com. Check out all the goodies that we got for you on the website. That's all you got to do. Let 3rd and 3 hook you up. All right. Let's roll, guys. Let's do our thing over here. We got some neighborhood news to get through quick, and then we're going to play some Where Do I Play? I'm going to name a player. You're going to tell me what team that person plays on. Have a little fun. We got a lot of stuff to do today. We got Mount Player Player. We're going to do AFC Awards. Let's go. Strap in, ready to rock and roll. All right, so Derwin James, D. Um, I'm all right with that. Highest paid safety in the entire NFL, even though he's got a bit of a bad track record when it comes to injuries. In 2019, he only played five games. He missed all of 2020. He did bounce back last year. Didn't have the greatest year by his standards, but they rewarded him with big money, and the Chargers are paying a lot of money, and it makes me wonder what happens when it comes around to Justin Herbert in a couple of years. Well, we always know the QB is going to get paid. So what they're doing right now is paying the people that they can before the QB has to get paid. Right, and right. James, we all know that Derwin James is A-plus talent, and according to his talent, he deserves his contract. But like you said, he has had some injury issues, so you hope that for you know the Chargers' sake and for his sake that he stays healthy, but – Talent-wise, he deserves his contract, so I can see why the Chargers wanted to go ahead and lock him in because you don't want to take any chances when it comes to talent like Derwin James heading to a different team. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, the kid's still 26 years old. His best years are ahead of him, Nikki, there's no doubt. And, you know, we keep talking about the Chargers' offense and Justin Herbert and Eckler and Keenan Allen and Mike Williams and all they're going to do. But you know what? With Khalil Mack, J.C. Jackson over there signing Derwin James and, you know, of course, the other players like Joey Bosa, damn, they got a full round of team, girl. I know. That's why I'm so high on them. <laughs> a lot of people are. A lot of people are. All right, moving along, Nikki, to your team. It's so funny, man. Listen, we joked about this last week, all right, with the quarterback situation with the Giants. But Brian Daybolt did say, all right, unless I joke around over here, Nikki, that Daniel Jones is the starter, yeah. but Tyrod Taylor is getting first-team reps. Why? Yeah, I know. I, yeah, I know. 
Or oh, so is this a record? Are we going to go five minutes in? Because last week we hit eleven minutes, but now you want to go five <laughs> minutes and ten seconds in. Well, I got to hear what you think about this. It's not what I think. It's what I know because I was standing right there at the podium. Um, despite what everybody's going to read and other media outlets and clickbait. And I did see a headline that said NFL world reacts to Tyrod Taylor getting first team reps. There is mm. nothing to react to. And let me be very, very, very clear. And people can believe it if they want. There is no like controversy going on in Giants camp. Brian Dable was very clear that Daniel Jones is QB1. Tyrod Taylor will get first team reps at an unknown time. Why? Again, because this is something he's learned over the years coaching. It's a best practice to throw in your backup quarterback when they're least expecting it without telling them, right? Because uh, what if your quarterback gets hurt? Okay, that's your, how it's going to go game time. So there is no competition. I don't understand. Well, I do understand. People want to have clickbait headlines, but – that is not what's going on. Uh, listen, I, I believe you, but then again, on the other hand, what is he supposed to say, Brian Dable? I mean, you know, they're going with Daniel Jones. They know that he's going to be the starter. I mean, they're trying it out one more time, D. I mean, this is really it as we talk about make or break seasons for a quarterback. So with that being said, Dable has to say that. You know, they probably wanted to say that, and he needs to say that at the beginning. Again, I'm not calling Tyrod Taylor the savior of the Giants, but what I'm saying is, is that – I don't think that he believes necessarily in Daniel Jones, and that's why he's throwing these little tidbits out there. Uh, maybe. Uh, I don't think it's much to read into, though. Like with Daniel Jones, this is his last right. chance, but it is his chance to be the guy. Uh, Tyrod Taylor, at this point of his career, is a backup, and that's what he came in for. He's one of those guys that you get as, okay, we have one of the best backups in the league, and the Giants have that in Tyrod Taylor. And if Tyra Taylor becomes a starter, that means that Daniel Jones has failed. But you're going, Daniel Jones is going to get that chance to fail. Mm. There's no mm. there, there. What's that saying? Or there's no here, there, whatever it is. There's no there, mm. there. I know people desperately want it to be because people don't want Daniel Jones to have a good season. People just, I, you know, again, it's like the negativity is just sick after a while. But there, there's no, nothing there. And no, would Brian Day will come out and say, I have no faith in Daniel Jones. But being around the team every single week and, you know, hearing what they have to say. I mean, they this whole entire team is bought in. And I really do believe Brian Dable feels he is confident in Daniel Jones. Um, and I can see the chemistry getting better each and every week. I know people don't want to hear that, but I, I've seen it and I witness it every week. So, um, yeah, Tyrod Taylor will get first team reps and, it, you know, just in the event he would in a real game time situation, should he have to, should something happen to Daniel Jones? Okay. All right. Then let's not read too much into it then is what you're saying. Let's see what happens. All right. Daniel Jones, uh, barring injury, will be the week one starter, and he will be given a chance like you guys say. Um, somebody Nikki, else. I know Nikki's tired of it. I feel like she's talking to a brick wall at times. Uh, yeah. so that <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. Wall. I really do. Some of you know. <laughs> You guys know Twitter can be really like, and I want to thank everybody who messaged me to say that I was bringing positivity and positive reporting to the Giants fan base, right? Because some of it just gets really out of hand. And there are some big name people who are in that press room with me who do not report the most accurate of facts. And I will leave it at that. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of truth to that. I have no doubt. And for those listening uh, right now who aren't watching uh, the podcast later on, D saying that brick wall, because he, he's got a brick wall behind him right now. Somehow he transported from uh, New Orleans over to like some brick wall in an alley or something like that. I don't know how he did that, but he pulled it. It's pretty That's amazing. When we start scrapping in a minute, because we're almost 10 minutes in, and I don't know how <laughs> you can hold back. Some magic trick right there. All right, so from one quarterback who has to prove himself to a quarterback who may get a chance to prove himself, and that's the Tennessee Titans. Some people uh, were very happy with the way Malik Willis played. Some people said, ah, we took him for his legs too much, but it's a preseason game. You know, he's feeling it out. So, D, with that being said, you know, we're not going to get too ahead of ourselves over here, but um, I'm sure they're trying to get this kid to be the starting quarterback sometime midway through the season if Ryan Tannehill isn't performing well and the Titans can somehow still be in the run for the AFC South. Um, it looks like Malik Willis may be their guy. 
they're going with Ryan Tannehill, of course. But what do you think, um, you know, just from the little bit that you saw and the potential that he may have? Well, yeah, he definitely showed why he is somebody who was highly touted, right? Some of us thought he was going to be a first round pick, right? Is one of the reasons our yep. uh, mock draft was so wrong was that yeah. we thought he was going to be a first round pick, and he definitely showed that ability. Like he made some plays where you're like, "Oh wow!" Like he made some of those wild factor type plays. So he definitely has it there. Uh, there's some plays where you're like, "Okay, he can make the easy throw there," but that comes along with time, where you're going to recognize, "Okay, I can make this play easier than running around and having to go, you know, side to side and then make the throw, and I can just make the throw in the pocket." That comes, again, with just time playing in the NFL. Uh, so I think he is the future. But if he is playing this year, that means the Titans have failed. Something's gone wrong if he's starting sometime during this year, I think. Probably. Probably so. And the Titans, uh, early in the season, they started out with Nikki's Giants, and they got the Bills, Raiders, Colts. So it's not the easiest start. And if they're going to blame it on Ryan Tannehill, uh, we may see Malik Bullis come in week four or five because later on they have the Chargers, Chiefs, Broncos, Packers. So – they have a tough schedule. Eagles, Bengals. Again, let's not forget they finished in first place and they had the best record in the AFC. So they have one of the toughest schedules out there. Um, all right, let's not call Gaga over here, but I was very happy with what I saw from Trey Lance in limited action. Uh, his first series was a little tough. He missed Danny Gray, our uh, fourth round wide receiver at SMU, who is a real speedster, and he showed that on the touchdown catch and pass from Lance to Gray. Nikki, that's what. Gets me happy, and I had a little thing on Twitter with somebody, and I'll go through it really fast. Oh yeah, I said, I saw that. you saw that, and I made I made the point. I said this is what this is why we have Trey Lance because he can make that throw, and he's willing to make that throw. This guy comes back at me with a <laughs> with a terrible pass that Jimmy throws because he basically gets hit at the end of it, completely underthrows Emmanuel Sanders, and Emmanuel Sanders was wide open when he got off the line, so Jimmy didn't even read it well. So I'm like, dude. That's like a terrible example, and you look for it for an hour. But, again, no offense to him. I'm not going to make fun of him. I'm not going to say his name on air. Just forget yeah. that it happened. But no, 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 I don't need to. You know what? We ended up following each other after, so it's all gravy. It's all good. We're cool. We're cool. But, no, the bottom line is, is that, Nikki, that throw is what I'm talking about. And his pocket presence, he stood there tall in the pocket, and we saw him run. He brings that dynamic. And, of course, the 49ers aren't going to be showing what they're doing. They're running a very vanilla offense right now. But when it comes out, this is what I'm talking about with Lance. Good. Um, listen, he's unproven to the rest of us. You know, I'm sure 49ers fans know. probably, yeah, know more than we do. Um, if you're, if you like it, I love it. If you're happy, this is the guy. Yeah. Good. Uh, but I, I think for a lot of us, he's, you know, yet to prove himself. Well, he is yet to prove himself. There's no doubt. I, I totally agree with that point. But the, but the little that we did see, we are happy. And again, it's more about the potential, Damien, that he brings. It's all about the potential and the things that he can do that Jimmy Garoppolo can. And that's why it's so exciting to have this kid. And hopefully he picks up the offense quicker than we had you know, originally thought. Well, yeah, it's the same thing with Malik Willis in Tennessee, right? But now you, but you guys are a step further because he got drafted a year earlier. So right. And he's are- starting week one. You know, that it is a difference. Yeah. And next year, hopefully Tennessee is seeing the same thing with Willis. Right. So with Trey Lance, you're seeing that, OK, this is why, like you said, you draft a guy like this. You give up all those draft picks for a guy like this because he has the potential to make those dynamic plays that Jimmy yeah. can't make. Uh, right. So hopefully he makes more of those dynamic plays than the bad plays that you saw in the first drive. But I have a good feeling about him, man. He definitely has all the potential in the world. and He seems like somebody who cares mm-hmm. about being great. From what I've seen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's the that's the, the main factor right there. Like, you know, he's gonna work hard to be good at his craft. Oh, no doubt. He's a guy, um, not just because he's the 49ers quarterback, but I feel like he's a guy I want to root for anyway. You know, he's one of those dudes. So oh man, am I excited? No doubt, no doubt. Uh let's close that neighborhood news over here with uh, Maurice Jones Drew coming out with his top quarterback wide receiver duos. I just want to th- run through them real quick and see if you guys do agree. I have a feeling you will on the first one as I wait for my slower's computer to come up. You know, again, I got that dial-up stuff, you know, with the rotary phone and everything. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, it takes- you got the landline and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Terrible. I'm awful. But um, they did go with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow at number That's one. That's all I need to know. Yep. Oh, yep. He's, in, he's in a fabulous mansion back there. Yeah. He's, 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 he's in his house with a house phone. <laughs> Transporting himself from place to place. It's amazing. I got to find out how you do that. It's like one of the X-Men is crap like that. I don't know how he's doing all this stuff. It's incredible. <laughs> um, 
But no, yeah, that, that's number one. Then they got um, Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, number two, which I have no problem with. Then Stafford Cup, number three. That's probably more because of Cup, Triple Crown. Don't know if you're going to do that again. Then Derek Carr, Devontae Adams at four. Mahomes Kelsey at five. So there's your tight end. Brady Evans. I'm surprised Evans over Godwin. I think Godwin's better than Evans. That, that's a side note, real quick. Nikki, who do you think is better? Who would you rather have, Godwin or Evans? Uh, well, no, I take Godwin. You would go, so, so would I. I would go Godwin also. I think he's more versatile. I feel like Mike Evans, and I don't want to he, listen. He's an excellent wide receiver, but and I don't want to limit him. But I feel like most of his plays come on either 50 50 balls or him running down the sideline. Godwin is more versatile. Yeah, Godwin definitely has a bigger route tree as far as you'll see him doing, you know, more of the slanting goals or the fake in and go yeah. out with. Mike Evans, you're going to get, you know, a five-yard curl route, the goal route, post route. Mm -hmm. You're going to get those, you know, routes. Uh, but I think you might go with Mike Evans because Godwin's coming off an injury. So maybe that's why you go with Mike Evans there. Uh, and maybe. Mike Evans, because he's so big and so physical, he does probably demand more attention than, say, Godwin because you have to double him a lot of times. You know, unless okay. you're the Saints, you have, like, Marshawn Lattimore over there or you have, you know, Jalen Ramsey, somebody like that. But yeah. – I think that Godwin is better, but I can see why you go with Mike Evans there in this conversation. All right. All right. I could dig that, you know, for the time being, again, coming off uh, tearing his knee up, ACL, MCL injury. Seven, they had Prescott and C.D. Lamb. I think C.D. Lamb is really good, and he'll be the number one wide receiver over there. Fantasy alert, fantasy alert. Justin Herbert, Keenan Allen at number eight. I'm um, not having a big problem with this so far. Then they went Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins at nine, and then Winston Thomas at ten. D, so that, oh, that's cool. oh my god oh d's got to be over the moon the same <laughs> over the i didn't moon. expect it i didn't expect uh winston and thomas to make the list because we haven't seen them really play that yeah. much like very limited action we've seen with those two uh so i, I like it but i'm surprised they're on the list honestly yeah i would have gone like kirk cousins justin jefferson over them no offense you know but I, I, yeah that's what i would have thought with me Something yeah, like I definitely that, right? can see Kirk Cousins, Justice Jefferson for sure, because we talked about how Jefferson has his first two years has been crazy, like as far as his stats yeah. that he's put up. Yeah. Uh, Kirk, and Kirk Cousins, I'm not a big Kirk Cousins fan, but he does get it to Justin Jefferson uh, for him to be able to do that. So I can see you going with Kirk Cousins and Justice Jefferson over them too, for sure. Yo, we need to be clear about something too. Kirk Cousins, again, he's the, we know he's not the greatest quarterback in the world, but his numbers every year are, are pretty solid. Now we know from watching him it's inconsistent, but his numbers are, are damn solid. They're, they're pretty good, I have to admit. But again, you know, you got to win, and he hasn't been doing a whole bunch of that lately. Kirk anyway, uh, is the poster yeah. boy for watch the game, don't look at the box score. Yes, yes, that's yeah. absolutely true. I totally agree. I totally agree. Absolutely. Makes a lot of sense. I like it. All right. So here's my little game for you guys. It's called Where Do I Play? And I'm going to name a backup quarterback. Oh, a backup on. quarterback. And you tell me where he plays. All right? So you guys work together as a team on this, okay? It's not going to be versus each other. Oh. All right? Thank you for bringing so here we go. work into this show. And yeah, that's what it's all about. Competitive, like, no. No. Yeah. So, it's all about the team. The team. That's what third and three. You know, we're in it all together over here. We got to get that first down. So let's go for it. All right. Here we go. How about Case Keenum, guys? Uh, Case Keenum is no longer in Cleveland. Where is he at now? Right about that. <laughs> I believe Case Keenum is now. Is he? Anybody listening, you can play along, but you guys can't cheat. Do we get a hint, or are you just throwing out a backup? Uh, I can give you a hint. I can give you a hint if, if it's a little tough. And they are tough. I'm not going to lie. These aren't that easy <laughs> at all. He's not in this, um, right? No. I'll give you a hint. There's no way. No, that's not a good hint. Um, what division is he in? All right, I'll tell you what. He took a team to the playoffs in the NFC within the last five years. Yeah, I know Case Kim took the Vikings to the playoffs. Yeah. yeah of course, as a Saints fan, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he's not in Minnesota. Is that where you're trying to? Is he in Minnesota? Yeah. No. Let me give you. I'm trying to. I was trying to add on to it, but I couldn't figure out the rest of it. All right. Let me get, let me try a better hint. Okay. okay. We're supposed to figure out where he plays. Correct. All right. Here we go. Try try a pun on words. Yes, it's where he plays. Okay. This team used to play in a very rich stadium. 
very rich stadium. Yes. Cowboys? No. They, they do oh, play in a rich used stadium. To, used to play in a rich stadium. Yeah. Now, that could be a pun on words. Oh. You know how I am. <laughs> God. Listen, okay. only one okay. tricky segment per show. Yeah. All right, I'll, <laughs> guys, the Buffalo Bills used to play at Rich Stadium. Oh, he's back yeah. in Buffalo. I would have never like. Yeah. I thought yeah. literal like money because you know Jerry just be spending. <laughs> yeah, like, it's water for the stupid dome and the stupid TV that the football hits all the time. <laughs> Jerry's world and the cheerleaders yeah. that he underpays. Yeah. I mean, come on. I know you got to get a committee over there and let them know what's up and let them know how important the cheerleaders actually are. I mean, you are the, the poster child for that in a good way. You know, yes. come on. All right. Here's the next one. How about Chase Daniel? Chase Daniel. Uh, is Chase Daniel. <laughs> of what Brent says, right? This is great. Uh, where's Chase uh, Daniel? Is Chase in Detroit? Commanders? So you're going with Commanders. You're going with Detroit. Can I tell you that you're both wrong? Okay. Uh, and he's playing with a team that was quarterbacked by a guy who will probably go to the Hall of Fame but never made it to a Super Bowl. Oh, he's in he was with the Chargers. That's right. He's with the Chargers. There you go. There you go. A little hint that sometimes you just need a little hint, and there it is. These are not easy. All right, let's go through a few more. Um, I think you guys who, know this one. Have who made more money from being a backup to great quarterbacks than Chase Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my gosh. Chase Daniel became him. Drew Brees' backup, and everybody's like, oh, we got to get Chase Daniel and overpay him to sell on the bench. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad gig, right? I mean, I could be anything, probably just like that backup quarterback that knows, like, oh, it's yeah, great. probably not going to have to go yeah. in and have the responsibility. If you don't aspire to be great, it's the best job in the world. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah. that. Like you still get a Super Bowl ring if the team wins a Super Bowl. I mean, it's really, really not that bad of a gig. No, that, seriously, I'll, I'll take the ring. I'll pawn it. You know, get some extra money because you're probably only making like league minimum as a backup quarterback. If you like, that's so, yeah, backup just, quarterbacks are making good money. Chase Daniels made like seventy million in the league. Like that's some sick man. stuff. That's great. <laughs> that Him and Sam Bradford should be sued for the amount of money. Sam Bradford forgot about that dude. Oh, shit. Yeah. He's Straight on a private island somewhere right now, relaxing with his bad. Oh, real. They're the reason why they <laughs> hate him. Because of him. They're like, all right, this guy stinks. We can't afford to be giving all these guys this much money. It's crazy. Man. What about uh, Colt McCoy? Where, where is he? Not in New York anymore. I know that. Uh, nope. He ain't there. Where the hell did he go? You know where he went. Think about it. Is he still with the Cardinals? Correct the Mundo. Okay. <laughs> That's right. Well done. He's still with the Cardinals. All right. Good tag team matchup over there. How about this one? I have a feeling that I know somebody knows this one right off the top of his head. Andy Dalton. What? Yeah. That's thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am not. How about? My backup quarterback, uh, where they landed this year. Like I said, it ain't easy. We're getting an education on the show. You know, these now we'll remember these things after. That that's yeah, the whole point. Quarterback, it's important. You know, starting quarterback goes down. You gotta, you yes. gotta know. Like Joe Flacco being the backup in New York is important. Yes. The odds are we, we're going to see half of these quarterbacks playing this year. So you know what? Let's let's figure out their names and where they're playing. How about Nick Foles? Where well, the he's hell with the did Colts. He go? That's right. Damien's got it. He's with the Colts. He's with the Colts. Okay. I had Joe Flacco on the list, but you already said Jets, so let's get him yeah, out of there. Everyone knows that. Ooh, yeah, all right. Week one, right? Because aren't they oh. playing the Ravens? Aren't the Jets playing the uh, Ravens? Yet? Joe Flacco yeah, got in the game. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I know. Could you imagine they win that game? That'd be unbelievable. Oh, uh, how about Blaine Gabbert? You guys know where he plays? He's in Tampa Bay, right? Dude, you're on a roll, man. Very nice. Very nice. Like an encyclopedia? I mean, what the hell is this? <laughs> I know it's the stuff. That's what I'm saying. I know. I, love it. I know. Let's see if you know where Matt Barkley plays. Oh. Jesus. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm surprised he's still in the league. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know he was still in the league. So, uh, yeah, he's the uh, tough Matt one. Barkley. He's uh, tough. Is he in Vegas? Not in Vegas. Ah. Uh. He's in a cold weather state. 
Cold and it's weather. in the AFC. Cold weather AFC. Think about where he went. I don't want to give too much more than that. No, that's a, that's a good clues. Oh. It's kind of a tricky question in, in a little bit of a way. You'll you'll see why. AFC. Like the first thing that comes to mind is Buffalo, but you already covered them. Yeah, it doesn't matter because that's where he's at, bro. It don't matter. Oh, because oh, I thought you already we already did. Okay, that's okay. He's there too. <laughs> Deep. Okay, this game awesome. is like move, okay. Wait, you just you, you, listen. Your partner's kicking butt over here. You guys are on the same team. Ding, ding, ding. Brian Hoyer, where is he? Oh my god! Oh, uh, come on, Nick. You know what I hear? What'd you say? He's in New England, right? He is in New England. He's in New England. All right, here we go. We got. I feel like that's the only team that's going to sign him at this point. Yeah, I know, right? It's like he's been with them already. Jeez, enough is enough. All right, we got three more. Uh, Chad Henney. Chad Henney. Chad. Henney. Yeah, another one still in the league. <laughs> Man, so it was, it wasn't that long ago he was making big plays, huh? Uh, mm hmm. Right? It's true. Any ideas? A hint. Yeah. Uh, Need a hint on this one? Yeah, because yeah. I want to guess that he stayed there, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, All right. So hint. The hint is is that the starting quarterback for the team is one of the best in the NFL. All right. So is he still in Kansas City? He's still in Kansas City. Still in Kansas City. Very nice. Well done. All right. Two more. Doing good, D. Uh, how about uh, Dre? Uh, Dr listen to me, Jeff Driscoll. Oh, he's what in Detroit. Is that? No, not in Detroit. Not Detroit. was in Detroit. Not anymore. He's now transferred. Oh, Denver. Oh no! Try oh. again. <laughs> wow. Who's, who's the quarterback who was playing for Denver the other day? Uh, I don't know. I don't think it was him, though, unless I totally – I'm going to look it up again, but I'm almost positive I have it right. I looked it up before. I made no, sure. You're, right, you're, you're most likely right. I, like, with preseason, I don't be paying attention that much. I just, like, literally catch I up. Oh, really? Because right. you got every <laughs> single question right. So you – No, I don't pay attention. <laughs> I know. Really. You're on a freaking roll, bro. Come on. Yeah, this yeah, one really. got me pumped, though. I don't even Let's... know who he is, so I have no idea. <laughs> So that again, not the most popular name, but again, we're getting an education over here. Okay, yeah, I'm right. All right, um, you want a hint or should I give it to you? I guess we can do a hint. One more guess. All right, let's do a hint. Um, he plays on a team that uh, he plays on a team where the starting quarterback got traded. Washington? No. Ah. Come up with a better hint than that. That's, that's such a great hint. Um, the starting quarterback got traded. Um, let's see if I can come up with another hint. Uh, how about Is he in Atlanta? Not Atlanta. All right. Here's, here's the best hint I can give. Um, they have been in the league. They were not in the league prior to 1992. Oh, so it's a newer squad. Okay. Yeah. Um, the in Houston? That's oh, Houston. That's it. Yeah, yeah Nikki, you say, all right. All right. <laughs> nice. We got one last one, and then we're getting to true or false. Here we go. Josh Johnson. Oh, man, he's played for every team in the league. That one's super hard. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he? He's like freaking Waldo. Where is he? Yeah. Yes. He's literally, I think he's played for like 14 teams or something crazy like that. <laughs> so, All right. Yeah, so I have no clue where he, I have no clue where he is now. He is playing in a, in a place where it's hard to breathe. Denver. <laughs> Denver. Denver. That's right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Yeah, I think I read somewhere he's been on 14 teams. Like it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, 14 teams in the past two months. I know. You ain't kidding. <laughs> oh, all right. All right. So we got a little education over there with backup quarterbacks oh, and maybe a couple of third stringers. Yeah. Yeah. My, my backup yeah. QB knowledge is a little better than I thought it was. Yeah, uh, right? Middle, a lot. <laughs> you are very knowledgeable that. in backup quarterbacks. Yes. That was good. Impressive. Impressive. 
All right, so let's play a little. Tr Go, are you gonna say anything? Oh, I just said thank you, sir. Yeah, you did very good. I'm gonna good give job. You a, uh, a crown. Okay. Those were not easy. King Those were not easy. Of QBs over there. It shouldn't be a crown. It should be a headset and a noteboard. <laughs> <laughs> a laminate? Would you like a laminated play sheet? No, I do not want a laminate. I do not want a laminated ear? sheet or a pencil. <laughs> oh, that's a, a pencil for your ear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yes. You got to grow the hair out more, though. Otherwise, it ain't going to work. Got to do oh, it. Oh, man. Is, oh, man. Have we found out, is he calling plays in New England? Have we found out? Is Matt Patricia oh, the one calling plays? I don't know who the hell's calling. Yeah, I had Derek Havens on Monday night, which was, what, two nights ago. And we were talking about that whole thing. And he, he, he's still he, – he's very much in tune with the Patriots. You know, he covers them. And he's still saying he's like they – they're not telling anybody. It's typical Bill Belichick. They probably had the answer. They're just not saying it yet because Belichick wants to be that way. That's the way he is. That's the thing. It's not like it's going to give you an advantage. Like if the defense coordinator is like, oh, it's Matt Patricia. I know oh. what he likes to call. Like it's right. not, it's oh, not something that's going to give them an advantage. Yeah. No. You know, and it, it's, <laughs> it's really – we talked about Bill Belichick, actually, and I really got into it that, you know, Belichick, he was deemed like the best head coach in the NFL after they won that third Super Bowl back in 2004. They didn't get back for another 10 years, but he was still like the best coach in the NFL, people were saying, for a long time. Do you guys feel, Nikki, I'll start with you. Do you? We talked about this, me and Derek. Do you feel that he is just really stuck in his ways, in his old school ways, and will not evolve with the game? And that's why they're maybe rugged on offense. They don't have too much going on. And he concentrates so much on the defense and the run game, which is important. Don't get me wrong. But he. it seems that he's not evolving, and he's stubborn to do so. Probably a little bit of that, right? I think as you get older, he's been doing something for such a long time. But I'd actually argue, I think sometimes he's ahead of the curve when it comes to trading certain players, right? And just kind of he knowing has been. Yeah. when their expiration date is coming. Uh, I think he's pretty good with that. And well, for the most part, what he's done has worked for him. But sure, I'd say there might be an element of stubbornness somewhere in there. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing. They went ten and seven last year and made the playoffs with a rookie quarterback. These, so I mean, you still have to give him credit for what it, you know for what went on. But um, you know, they had a fairly easy schedule that year for the most part because you know they finished so poorly the year before with uh, you know Cam Newton as the quarterback and whoever the hell it was before. I can't even remember at this point. But um, Mac Jones doing a pretty decent job, and and. It, a lot of people compare him to like, oh, he's like a young time. To me, he reminds me of Alex Smith in a lot of ways, but that's another conversation for another time. But do you feel that Belichick is now just like, kind of like stuck in his ways and is not going to evolve and it's my way, the highway, and still the same sort of attitude and practice with these guys and even not evolving, not just on the field, but even off the field with his players who is it's a different generation. Well, yeah, when you get older, you get stuck in your ways. Uh, I'm experiencing that now in my 30s where there's certain things where I'll I'm get out of here, you and your 30s. <laughs> 30s. No, for real. Like, there's certain things once you get to like a certain age, you're just not going to change about yourself. About and imagine him in his 70s now. That's true. Like, yeah, he's not going to change certain things and he's had success. So, not only are you old and stuck in your ways, you have success with these ways. So why would you change them in your mind, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's kind of the same thing with Greg Popovich in basketball. The Spurs have been struggling the last few years. People are uh -huh. trying to ask, is it about Greg Popovich not changing his ways? But he's one of the greatest coaches in NBA history. So why should he change his ways would be his you know, response to that? Well, I mean, when the game changes, you have to change a little bit. That's what I think. You know, he should have gotten, you know, maybe faster receivers or something like that because, you know, you're going to get pass interference calls. So I definitely hear what you're saying. When you're the greatest of something for such a long time, why would you change? I do get it. But um, at, the, at the same time, I don't know. I feel like he's got to evolve. And my father is old school saying, if the old school saying is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I hear you. Hey, look, if they go to the playoffs this year again, I'll, I'll shut my mouth. It's, it's looking really good. broken right now, but we won't know if it's truly broken to the regular season. Uh, yes, yes, we will find out. <laughs> we will find out and see if they have another uh, three pass game in them. That'll be amazing. <laughs> oh, God. Unbelievable. Wow. All right, let's move on. Some true or false. And I'm going to jump in with you guys. I just randomly started making up questions and a single one popped out. So let's go here with the Denver Broncos. Will Javante Williams, their running back, who will be predominantly their number one running back. Melvin Gordon will get in third down, most likely sort of thing. Will he be a top 10 running back at the end of the season? You could take that fantasy-wise, or you could take that, 
yardage wise if he'll be in the top 10. Damian, Javante Williams, I'm definitely very high on him. Um, as long as he's predominantly getting the carries, I think so. What do you think? Oh, top 10. I'm trying to like run down in my head the top 10 running backs. Yeah, I should. I'll try to get the list of running backs yeah. up. I'll oh. see if I could do that. You know, we got like obviously Mixon, Dalvin Cook, uh, Kamara's in there, Jonathan Taylor, McCaffrey. Yeah, I don't uh, know about top 10. Um, Maybe yeah. just on the outskirts. Chug- I would say false. Well, the thing is, they're going to run the ball a lot. That that that's kind of my point, you know. So, yeah. on the goal line, he's going to be a monster. He's a tough guy to tackle. Now, I can see him having a very good year, but I'm with Nikki. I can see him being right on the outskirts of the top ten. Uh, someone, right. if you're talking fantasy wise, an RB two. Yeah. For you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, RB two. Yeah, that'd be pretty good in RB two. Yeah, probably not RB one. I'm with you. Probably can get, you know, somebody better than that. I'm going to try to get these. Uh, these uh, uh these backs up right now with some of these names, but the computers are going so damn slow, which drives me freaking crazy. All right, let me get to the next one. Um, next on the list after Javante Williams, we have Tom Brady. Will he throw for at least forty five hundred yards, Nikki? True or false? Forty five hundred yards at least. Yeah, true. Yeah, you going true. true as well. uh, their team is set up to pass the ball, and that old line, the way the old line is set up, they may not be able to run the ball. <laughs> the way they want to, so they might be doing a lot of passing mm-hmm. out of necessity. So he yeah. might get yards. He might, he might not want to get that many yards, but he's going to have to throw for those yards for them to be successful. Yeah, I agree. That's why I was talking about them being a top fantasy team in the league, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's going to be throwing the ball all over the place. So I completely agree with you guys. I say true as well. So I'm with you. All right, Jonathan Taylor will lead the league in rushing. True or false, Damian? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say true because he's pretty pretty healthy. Like he's been very okay. durable, and Y'all I have know. Derrick Henry taking a step back this year. So I'm gonna go Jonathan okay. Taylor lead the league in rushing this year. All right, all right. So D is saying Jonathan Taylor will lead the league in rushing. You saying true, Nikki? True or false? Jonathan Taylor leads the league in rushing. True. Okay, both of you guys. All right. <laughs> Tough to do it back to back years. I think if Dalvin Cook stays healthy. He might be my answer right there, but yeah, I can the Colts have a better O line. They do. Quentin Nelson coming back healthy, sure. Yeah, that definitely helps. It's no question. All right. Plus, I'm so um, high on the Colts, like I have to back that up. So. I know you're real. Yeah, I know. Usually, I'm the one who's freaking out about the Colts. I'm so high on them that now, it's like you've taken over the mantle over here. But I'm with you. Don't forget that. I'm still a Colt fan, and you know, C. Lou, he knows that. I'm gonna have him on with. Uh, hey, what's hey, that? You are the Colts for new Bengals. The uh, they? Yeah, I think so. Mm, but we'll find out. We'll find out in our big prediction <laughs> show. It's kind of messed yeah. up a little bit, Nikki. I'm not going to lie to you okay. because you know that's my team in the AFC. You know how much I love it. You have like a team. Like, I'm the, the I predicted them to you know, do as this. As far as I remember, you were like all in on the Jags. Like, so I the mean, Jags? Yeah, didn't you say like they're gonna win nine games or something? Crazy? I said they probably go eight and nine, but I think the Colts are gonna win eleven, maybe even twelve games this year. I'm allowed to like the Colts. You sit here and argue with me every week about Matt Ryan, he's washed up. What year is it? Oh he's no, no, the twisting my words. And then when I go home, doing it again. Colts, I talk about fantasy, talk about sleepers, Matt Ryan, oh. Alec Pierce, Jonathan oh. Taylor, V top, you know, rusher. And now you want to come at me and say it's unfair and that's your team. Huh. It is my team. Matt Ryan's a good NFL quarterback. Again, for the millionth time, get this through your head. He's not a good fantasy quarterback. I don't know why you can't understand Please. this. God in heaven. I can't. You will, we'll, we'll make a side bet. He will finish outside the top 12 in fantasy quarterbacks this year. I guarantee it. Promise you. Promise. Oh, promise. Okay. Promise guaranteed. Put okay. your money. So, so, what does the loser have to do? If Matt Ryan finishes outside or inside the top twelve fantasy quarterbacks, what happens? What does the loser have to do in this bet? All Jay right. has to get rid of his landline. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Uh, well, mine. My, my, I'll do Nikki a favor. She has to leave New Jersey. <laughs> okay. Well, then I'm coming right to Florida, and I'm really going to be better off. Yeah. You'll live longer. Well, I don't know. You guys are weird down there. Uh, I don't know, actually. Uh, half of us are from there. Half of us are from there, anyway. So, yeah, yeah, we're full of weirdos, no doubt. 
Oh, geez. No, I'm with the Colts. Colts, they're my AFC team, no doubt. All right, moving on. Moving on. I, I'm sorry. D, like, could you back me up here? Like, no, this, he knows it's true. It he knows it's true. You, the, you were high on the Colts last year. You're so high on Phillip Rivers, who, oh, again, just despite all the talent around him, can't seem to get it done. Okay, but as Phillip Rivers as has been retired for 10 yeah, years. Where the hell did he come from? Not high on the Colts. No, not at all. <laughs> I was going to pick the Colts to make the playoffs that year. As a matter of fact, I do remember. Last year, last year, you were so high on Rivers. You're down on that, oh, Ryan. But now you want to jump on the Colts bandwagon. Wow, jump on the Colts bandwagon. You are That's adding you. your mind. You are insane. Jump on the Colts so, bandwagon. You are okay. now. Yeah. Elu will tell you. He'll tell you. He knows that I've been Colts all the way. You come in and try to steal my AFC team. My I'm AFC not team. No, not right. No, not not right. My AFC team. That's wrong. That's just wrong. I'm sorry. Thief. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> a thief. I'm not a thief. I, I'm sorry. You mean I'm right. But that's okay. Yeah, we're I guess we're both right. Well, we'll see if we are, hopefully. Because I'm rooting for the Colts because I'm a real fan of them. Anyway, whatever. 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 All right. Let's move it on. All right. True or false? Nikki. Let's go to you, the mad Nikki that she is. Devontae Adams will lead the NFL in receptions. He will catch the most balls this year, Devontae Adams. Yeah, true, true because that's the other team I'm so high on. <laughs> ah, okay, good. Then we can definitely differentiate over there, and we can have a lot of fun with that one because I'm not high on the Raiders, even though. I know, we know, we know. Yep. So don't try to jump on the bandwagon in three weeks either. I will not be jumping on any wagon. I don't care how many wheels are on there. I want no part of their bandwagon whatsoever. I'm out. I'm out. The Raiders are not my team, and I have no problem admitting it. So, done. No problem. Good time. But. I do think Devontae Adams will probably be targeted more than anybody in the league and therefore will probably have the most receptions. So I would say probably, yeah, D. I don't think he's ever led the league in receptions before. Even I don't think all, he has either. Yeah, all the accolades he's gotten. So I'm going to say no. I don't think he leads the league in receptions this year. All right, all right. I think that he's got a chance. Look, I think that the his ultimate – competitor in that case would be Tyree Hill because he's going to catch a lot of bubble screens. So he would be maybe my, <clears throat> excuse me, my replacement to say over there. But um, I think that this year when it comes to Devontae Adams, he was always just that guy. Like he counted for 55 to 60% of the balls that were thrown in the air by Rogers. Now you got Waller and Hunter Renfro over there. So that'll take some of the attention off Devontae Adams. And that's why I think that he may finish in that category. Does that make sense to you? No, it definitely makes sense for sure. Like he caught 123 last year. And of course, he didn't lead the league because Cooper Cup had, you know, the crazy season he had. Um, I, sure but I don't know if he's going to catch that many balls. He's definitely going to be targeted a lot and he's going to be very productive. But I don't know yeah. if he catches 123 because you have Darren Waller and Hunter Renfro there as okay. well. Renfro is somebody who can eat up a lot of catches because of the role he plays as far as all those short routes that he does. Uh, yeah. So I don't think he leads the league in catches this year. All right. All right, we'll see. The, the Raiders, they throw the ball a hell of a lot, even with a healthy Josh Jacobs back there, if that's what he's going to be. They still throw it a lot. Yeah, we'll see. All right. Um, like I said, Tyree Kill, he may be the other guy that I was thinking of. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, Damien, will throw at least, and I know that this is your quantum leap, man, will throw at least 25 touchdown passes this year. Yes, he will throw at least 25 touchdown passes because yeah. he's taking a quantum leap. Yes. That will be part of the quantum leap is him throwing 30 touchdown passes this year. Oh, boy, watch <laughs> out. I saw a fantasy quarterback over here. Here we go. <laughs> fantasy quarterback. Well, damn. All right, Nikki, 25 touchdown passes. True or false? false. Trevor Lawrence. False. false. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. All right. I think I'm kind of on Nikki's side with this one, which, I, you know, I hate doing. But, yeah, he's probably more yeah. like 22, yeah, 23 range. <laughs> About 22, 23 range. You know, Ma's saying we argued like brother and sister. It is amazing. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right. Russell Wilson will throw single digit interceptions this year for Denver, Nikki. True or false? True. True. Okay. All right. So he's going to protect the football. He's not going to have to go crazy. He and... doesn't have many anyway. That's so. true. You're right. You're right. You're right. All right. What do you think, Ding? Hmm. Single digit, single digit. 
I'm going to go false. I think he gets 11. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of on the false side, too. I think for some reason, maybe he tries to show off a little bit in the beginning of the year and collects like five yeah, early new, interceptions. Yeah, new system, new yeah. players he's getting used to. Yeah. So I see a little, a, little, a little extra You just time to get used to it, so a few more interceptions than normal. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking more for the beginning of the year. I think that he'll catch on more and cut them down, but it will lay it up toward the end of the year. I'm kind of with you on that one. Um, how about uh, this one, Nikki? Justin Herbert will lead the NFL in touchdown passes. True or false? Hmm. Um, false. False. All right. I'm going with false, too. I'm not sure who it's going to be, but – don't get me wrong, Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are awesome, and I'm sure that Austin Eckler is going to catch a few, Damian, but I think that there's, you know, Tom Brady still over there. I don't know if Stafford necessarily, but Burrow, I, I don't know. I, I just don't know if I can bank on on uh, yeah. Justin Herbert leading the league. So what do you think? Yeah, he's definitely in the running, but like you said, there's a lot of quarterbacks there. I definitely can see Burrow doing it for sure with a better offensive line this year in Cincinnati. You yeah. mentioned Tom Brady, Stafford, those guys are going to throw a bunch. Oh, Josh Allen. Yeah, he's going to he's going to yeah. be throwing the ball this year. So I'm going to go false, but he's definitely in there. Like he's in the field for that opportunity to do that for sure. Yeah. Without a doubt. Agreed there. So all right, we're all going false, but it doesn't mean that he's not going to be, you know, top three or something like that. All right. How about this one? Um, Micah Parsons, Damian, will have double digit sex this season. True or false? I'm going to go false. I think teams will be more ready for him this year, especially if he's playing more defensive line. Uh, so I think he's still very productive, but false on double-digit sacks. False on double-digit sacks. All right, uh, Nikki, I think true. I think that this guy is an absolute monster, and he's going to come from the left side, the right side, up the middle. He's going to be very hard to account for, and he's just such a great athlete that I think that he can pick up 10 to 12. What do you think? hard because like D said like I feel like yeah now teams will be prepared for him but he is such a beast out there uh would you say double digit yeah, yeah I feel like he can hover around 10 I'm gonna say true but barely true yeah all right yeah I'm with you I think it's gonna be in the low you know yeah like I said 10 to 12 maybe or something like that but he's such a beast wow uh, this guy we thought was a beast and probably is a beast but we need to see him really beast out and that's Saquon Barkley Nikki Will he rush for at least a thousand yards this year? Which basically yes. means he's going to stay healthy. Yes. yes. Yes, he will. All right, that's a definitive yes. Definitive D. Yes. I hope he does, man. It's it, it's a tough one. I think that he may have this bounce back year, and I think he's going to stay healthy and stay determined. But he has been injury prone. Um, I'm saying yes because I'm hopeful. What do you think? I'm right there with you. I hope that he is healthy. If he's healthy, he definitely does it because his talent is crazy. Like he's crazy talented. Amazing. Uh, so I hope that he stays healthy and is able to do it. And maybe he wins comeback play of the year. Oh, how about that? Right, look at that. Nikki's saying he will. Damien's saying maybe. I Hi, love it. Oh, what up? And she says yes, by the way, for Saquon Barkley. All right. He is, healthy. he is healthy. And if anybody hasn't seen my fantasy video on Saquon, go watch it now. It's pinned to my Twitter profile. Does That's he have right. a shirt off in your video? Is it? Is he, <laughs> no, he waits. He okay. Just, just checking. Just making She's sure. Like, this is, it's like this one is professional. This one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to have to correct myself because I was talking about fantasy nights with Nikki and I was like, oh, no, I mean football because I accidentally did that today, and somebody was like, does it have to be uh, football questions? And I was like, oh, shit, I didn't clarify. Yes, preferably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. Oh, that's, that's beautiful. Hilarious. All right. Um, here's another, again, true or false. We got maybe four or five more before we get to knowledge with Nikki, and I can't wait for that, of course. Damien, Carson Wentz will revive his career in Washington. False. 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 Media <laughs> false. <laughs> Nikki, I feel the false pouring out of your pores right now. It's it's, it's coming out, right? False. False all the way. I know. I know. It, it is kind of a laughing matter. I know. Absolutely. It is. I don't think he will either. You know, the pressure is off him, you know, probably for the most part because what else? What else? You know, it's his third team already in three years. But hey, what are we reviving to? Philadelphia circa, what year is it? 2017. 2017. It was five years ago we had that. Yeah. Even, even 2019, Carson Wentz. Yeah, they were in the playoffs that year. Yeah, they were decent. Yeah. yeah. Wentz was by himself for the most part. Alshon Jeffrey was hurt. 
uh, in that game. Yeah, they they had a tough running at it. Nelson Aguilar was dropping passes. Yeah, I remember that game against Seattle. And I remember Jadavian Clowney with a nasty, dirty hit on Carson Wentz. That was not right. You guys remember that play? Yeah. Oh, hit him with the, the helmet, helmet hit? Yeah, man. Like, Wentz was already down on one yeah. knee. That was yeah, I remember game. that hit for sure, yeah. Totally uncalled for. Um, here we go. The Chicago Bears will win five games to Nikki. True or false? Uh, false. I'm with you on that one. I'm going false also. What do you say, Dean? Yes, false. I did a video on the over-under of Chicago Bears earlier today. And, yes, false for <laughs> nice. five games for the Chicago Bears. Real deal bets, baby. That's right. <laughs> Bring them on. Real deal bets all year long. All right, Damien, you'll love this one. Chris Olave will lead all rookies. Oh, All rookie wide receivers. Give him this question. I, well, I mean, let's see. Let's see how Homer he's going to be over here. Oh, so Homer. We have Michael that's Thomas cool. over there. You know, we got Jarvis Landry over there. So, will no, Chris that's, Olave, that's the part that makes it tough because he has two receivers who are going definitely get more targets than him. So Michael this Thomas is what and Jarvis Landry. Talk about over here. So, will he lead all rookies in receiving yards? Uh, I'm gonna say. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no because there's some other rookies who I uh, think are going to get more opportunities than him just because of teams they're on. You think about the rookie in Green Bay. He yes. Have a good year, um, because the other wide receivers aren't really stepping up as Aaron Rodgers has already called him out in public. So you, get, <laughs> <laughs> so you might have that there. You have Sky Moore in Kansas City uh, with that wide receiving core. So I'm going to say no. I think Chris Olave has a really good year, but because there's Thomas, Landry, uh, and Kamara coming out the backfield catching balls as well, I think that he's not going to have the opportunities to lead the league and receiving yards for rookies. Yeah, there's so many uh, guys. that You know, Drake London looked really good before he went out when he – I think he hurt his ankle a little bit, but he was looking pretty nice. And then you got Garrett Wilson, of course, um, Jameson Williamson when he comes back, but he's not going to have enough time to, you know, lead the league. But – um, maybe Olave will benefit Nikki from single coverage. I don't know. What do you think? True or false? He leads the league in uh, for rookies in uh, receiving yards. Let me do it for you. Dude. I'll take the true for you because I know you really want to say that, but ah. you know, a measured, objective per approach like I do. Uh, but I will say true. <laughs> I like you, do I? <laughs> Uh, you are becoming more objective as the days go on. Becoming more objective. <laughs> what have I not been objective? I, I I don't know. Every time you talk about Daniel Jones, how? Maybe? No, hold on. <laughs> no, no, no. How am I not objective when it comes to Daniel Jones? You obviously don't follow my live tweets at Tron Training Camp Tuesday. Uh, I uh, just state the facts. So if a Dory Jackson has two interceptions on him, those are the facts. If he connected with Galladay, then that is a fact. How is that not objective? That's the most objective that anyone could be. I am the most objective Daniel Jones reporter out there. That is a fact. Opinion-wise, yes, you have to report on – you can't ignore the facts. The facts are the facts. But when I it comes to your opinion, the it's a little slanted. I literally report the facts. I don't inject my opinion other That's than saying, cool. like, I don't think he's the guy, but I just report the facts. That's it. You're a good reporter then. There you go. Report so the facts. you can't say I'm not objective. They're two different things. They're two different things. I would, no, say, I would say the only time she's not objective when it comes to, like, the Eagles or Cowboys when it comes to talking about Oh, boy. Them. You ain't kidding. Oh, my no, goodness. I said the Eagles are going to win the freaking division. Are you <laughs> kidding me, D? I was super objective with that. I mean, the two of you just. It just it's like pulling teeth to get you to say that, though. That's the part. It really is. Now, I know. I, okay, I may <laughs> begrudgingly say it. Without really you <laughs> saying Atlanta's going to win the division. You don't want to say it, but you're objective about it. Last week, you got all pissed at me because I, did, I didn't ask you a Philadelphia Eagle question on purpose. I didn't want to get you mad. Then you said, what the hell? And then I asked you the question. You said, screw off. That's what happened. You didn't want to do it. You wanted no part of it. No. True or false? <laughs> no, I, I this that Nikki's not objective narrative. I'm shutting that down right now because that is Woo! completely freaking false. It's out. All right, it's gone. Forget about it. All right, let's see how objective you are about this one. It has nothing to do with your team, though. Kyle Pitts mm -hmm. will be a top three fantasy tight end. Nikki, true or false? I just wish he wasn't on such a shitty team. Mm. Uh, <laughs> mm, like, I'm gonna say false, but close. Close, but. All right. Yeah, he's got, you know, obviously Waller, Kelsey, maybe Kittle, Mark Andrews. So top three is a lot, but they, yeah. D, I don't know. Um, 
Gosh, this is tough, man. I, I think I might say true because they're going to use him so much and they use him like a wide receiver. Uh, I think he's going to get so many targets that he might finish with the top three. Um, again, he may not hit the end zone that many times, but uh, I can see him maybe even 1,200 yards. So I would maybe lean toward true for Kyle Pitts being the top three fantasy uh, tight end. I'm going to say false just because of those top three that you named. It's tough to get into that top three in tight ends when you talk about Kelsey, Kittle maybe this year coming back and having a good year awesome. because you guys have Trey Lance, Mark <clears throat> Andrews. You mentioned Darren Waller. It's tough to get in that top three. So I'm going to say false, but I do think Kyle Pitts has a good year. All right. Nini says false, and Courtney is agreeing with me saying true over there. All right, Courtney, I love it. There you go. I knew you had my back, bro. I knew it. <laughs> he's saying that because I'm so high on the Philadelphia Eagles this year that he's going to agree with me. Oh, That's my exactly. God. I'm high on the Eagles, too. Stop. <laughs> I didn't say anything about you, for Christ's sake. I just said that I'm high on the Eagles. I didn't say you were high on the Eagles. As nothing if, like, about you at all. Again, you were like a saber know, I didn't give them accolades and whatnot. I mean... You know, I did, I did JC Sports Talk podcast, and I that first of all, it's an Eagles podcast, and all the fans were Eagles fans. And I said the Eagles were going to win the division. I, as a Giants fan, had to go on an Eagles-based podcast and actually say that I thought the Eagles would win the division. How much did they pay you to say that? That was crazy. <laughs> I mean, that must have been a check in the mail of amounts ago. They sell you something. I don't know. Got to be. Free day, because I am objective. Uh, Courtney, I think we're with you on that one. Andrews and Kelsey probably one and two, and then could be Waller at uh, at three. I wish it was Kelsey at two or three. Jeez, my gosh, or even one for that matter. Um, all right, let's do two more, and then let's get to knowledge with Nikki, where she gets her chance to uh, throw the jabs right back at us. Okay. Trey Lance will prove that the 49ers made the right decision by not just drafting him, but naming him the starter over Jimmy G. Damian, true or false? Well, I think it's the right move already, right? If even cool. if he has a bad year, with the, all the things you gave up for him, if he's not the starter, then what are you doing, right? Like, it's you had second year, he's got to be the starter. Uh, so I think it's already been proven that's the right move, and I think he will prove that it was not only the right move, but it was a great move uh, that you guys ah, have success this year. Yeah. I love that. That's music to my ears. It's such a great team that we <laughs> have out. Yeah, Nikki, getting some props over there for being uh, for. You know, taking your bias out of the whole thing. Good job. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. My friends have my back. No, and, and, <laughs> and you should. You're a hell of a friend. I have no doubt that you treat your people right over there in Jersey. I have no question about it. But what do you think about my boy Lance? You think they, they made the right move? You think it's going to turn out to be the right move? Um. Yeah, probably. I mean, I sure hope so. <laughs> yes, me <laughs> too. To be. Oof, what a yeah. blunder that would be. That would be terrible. That would set us back a little while. All right, the very last one is Kyler Murray will make good on his five-year $235.5 million contract, Nikki. True or false? Uh, make good how? Like actually being significant and maybe even appearing in a Super Bowl? Actually studying? Like, yeah, I guess it's <laughs> your criteria of make good. If make good is appearing in a Super Bowl, false. If he stu Will he study? True. Yeah, well, he better say, look, D, that much money, you're expected to get to a Super Bowl and probably win one. I mean, that's a lot of money. Exactly. Yeah, of course, that's a lot of money. And every quarterback that's a quote unquote franchise quarterback is getting that money now. So it's hard for every quarterback to live up to that contract. Uh, so if, if that's the standard getting to the Super Bowl, I don't think that Kyler Murray lives up to that standard. But I do think he'll study more than four hours a week of film. Yeah, yeah. four hours, 15 minutes, you know, whatever it takes, just a little bit over just to prove them right. You know, that's all. But yeah, damn. I mean, listen, you get paid that much money. That's not just so you can be a quarterback who takes your team to the playoffs and gets out in the first round. That's not good enough. So and also they're going to have to build around him. Let's not beat around the bush. They need a better team. They really do. They yeah. need a better team. And right now they don't have one. And I'm perfectly fine with that. Works out well for me. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for. Here we go. Knowledge with Nikki. What is the topic today? Um, so you guys know that Friday is National Aviation Day, and next week is the air show in Atlantic City. So we're going to do some aviation trivia. All right, that sounds interesting. I like that. I like that. All right. All right, uh, D, are you first this week? I am first this week. All right, here we go. Right, fly, so away. <laughs> fly away. Fly <laughs> away. 
Oh, the brick wall is back. Yep, he's <laughs> back yard again. Uh, okay, D, number one. Each engine on a Boeing 747 weighs how many pounds? The engines, I will say yeah. 200 pounds. No. Jay? I'll say 3,500 pounds. 9,500. Oh, it's a lot. Wow. It's heavy. Damn. But say so you would think they were trying to make it lighter for it yeah. to fly. Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> I don't know about I don't want to go on a plane. Damn. That shit's heavy. That's how you got to calculate all that fuel, right? You got like the weight of the plane, it's all crazy. the luggage. I'm an overpacker. My shoes alone, probably like 50 pounds. Make sure your pilot isn't drunk. That's another <laughs> thing. Whose pilot's drunk? What do you mean? You ever watched that movie with Denzel Washington? I, I actually did see that movie. You turned did. Just... Something upside down. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hell of a new movie. Oh my god! How bad would you guys puke and like shit a brick if that actually happened? Oh. I would lose it. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Every would just wow. It would just projectile. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Just Exorcist. <laughs> Head spinning around. Oh. Yeah. Oh my god. But, okay, number two. Atlanta International Airport is one of the busiest airports in the world. How much passenger traffic passed through the Atlanta airport last year? Wow. How, how much passenger traffic? So yeah, like, so how many uh, passengers? Yeah. Okay. The whole year? The whole year. 2021. It's it's have you guys ever been to Atlanta's airport? No. No. It sucks. It absolutely it sucks. sucks for you. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's so many people. It's in there so slow. Like, so this it makes sense why this is one of the questions. Um, Interesting. I would say um, throughout the whole year, I'm gonna go with ten million. No, Jay. Fifty million. Seventy-five point seven million passengers. Yeah, wow, makes sense. Should have gone a little bit higher. Nee, you were close. Hundred so million. Close. Okay, so don't go to Atlanta Airport. Yes. No, nope. yeah, if you don't, if you don't have to, do, yeah, do not you don't do have it. to. <laughs> Avoid yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, all right, D. Uh, what are we on? Number three. How many liters of water does the human body lose on average on a three-hour flight? Oh wow. Um, Liters of water. Liters? Yeah. I would say two liters of water. Jay? Five. Uh, D, I'll give it to you. 1.5. Oh, there you go. That works. Nice. All right. Okay. Last one for you. How many airports are in the United States? Wow. Hmm. Uh, uh, I'm going to say... There are, I'm going to say 103. No. Jay, I do like that one. So that's that Price is Right style. 103. <laughs> I'll say like about um, 2,500. 20,000. 20, 20, I meant to say 25,000, but still, I would have been wrong anyway. All right. 25,000. I wow. guess when you think about the little airports too, because I was just thinking about it now here in Phoenix, of course, we have the big Phoenix airport. That's the hub, but they have like two little ones that are just out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm like, when I was driving for a I'm taking people to, I'm like, really? There's an airport out here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah they, so yeah, a bunch of small ones like that that you get about. There are. It's true. Yeah. Long Island's got a couple of little small airports. Yeah, it's true. Oh, well, let's not. We already had the airport argument. Um, okay. So moving on. <laughs> Jay, are you ready? Okay, ready as you'll ever be. What is the average salary for entry level flight attendants in the United States? 55,000. No. D? I'm going to say 40,000 a year. 39,000. Yes, I'll give it to you. Wow, nice <laughs> guess. Very nice good. Job. All right, Jay, number two, what percentage of the population is afraid of flying? U.S. population. 32%. D? Uh, I'm 
going to say 45 percent 80 percent 80 percent of you are afraid to fly damn eight out of every 10 people interesting yeah. okay. everybody just calm down so i guess <laughs> like out of that 80 percent like 20 percent have the extreme fear where they like won't get on the plane yeah probably right i mean because I, I feel like if it's 80 percent of people there's no way the, air, the airport would be that packed if everybody right. was scared it's probably people, yeah. <laughs> they probably still fly but it's like their biggest yeah. fear yeah there are like people every- who, yeah People are terrified of flying. They still do it, though, because they have to for one reason or another. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like everything's fine. I mean, I love it. Like you just airplane mode. Nobody can bother you and catch up on TV, eat your snack. I mean, it's freaking great. Yeah. Once you get on the plane, it's awesome. I hate the airport. Oh, hate the airport. <laughs> but, the, but uh, the airplane itself isn't bad. I hate yeah. the airport. I hate going through. And oh. we've done me and my wife did the uh, pre TSA check or TSA pre check. And we did like a month ago, and we're still waiting for our stuff to come back so we can finally not have to deal with it. It was taking forever. Uh, so <laughs> it's like, and so the last two times we've flown, it was after we did it, but we still had to go through the whole general checkup. And it was like, oh, this is just oh my ridiculous. Gosh. So I don't mind the air, I don't mind flying at all, but the airport is what I have a fear of. <laughs> yeah, no, I, the airport sucks. Oh my God. Yeah. Can somebody make it better? Somebody get, I know Nork is going through improvements, but can we speed this up? Because it is miserable. All right. Number, number three. Jay, in 1987, American Airlines saved how much money annually by removing one olive from the first class salad? I don't know where you come up with this shit. Um, Three million dollars. No. See? I'm going to say $200,000. No, just $40,000. That's it. That's it from taking well, one olive. It's, it's really worth it to take that one olive out and disappoint people. Unbelievable. <laughs> All right, last one for you. You know there was that one guy who counted the olives? Yeah. He was like, yo, yo, there's <laughs> only three olives. It used to be four. What's going on here? That's what I had to explain to him that they were trying to save money. Like I, I wanted I wanted to be a fly on the wall for that conversation, just for the guy who was in the A-hole who had that one extra olive. <laughs> Man. And you know he probably started like a whole big to do about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Over an olive. All right, last one for you. In 2019, how many bags of luggage were lost worldwide? Mm. That's uh, one of my biggest fears for sure. Is somebody losing my luggage? Oh, ten thousand. How much? Ten thousand. No. And can you repeat the question, Nick? Uh, in 2019, how many bags of luggage were lost worldwide? Worldwide? I'm going to say 50,000. 1.7 million. Wow. <laughs> like mine said, too many. <laughs> that is That's one of my cool. biggest fears. I know it's like a little, out of all the things you could be afraid of. Yeah. But- Losing your luggage? Yeah, yeah, my shoes, yeah. my makeup, my hair. I would be a freaking wreck. I don't cry often, but I promise you, I would have a complete full on <laughs> meltdown in the airport. So I, I just put like, you know, your bags on the carousel, and I'm just like, oh, please be there. Like, <laughs> like, for me, I'm always making sure, like, when they put the tag on, that they're putting the tag on to where it stays on. That's my biggest yeah. fear is like, somebody will be lazy, put it on, it'll come off. And now your bag is going to Denver and you're going to New York. Yeah. That's my, (laughs) that's my biggest fear. I always keep the thing too. Like a lot of people just throw that thing away, but the little tag they give you, I always keep it to make sure I have it. Cause I literally think about it all the time. That's right. Goes right in my wallet just in case. I don't know what that's going to do for me, but I feel like if I got that little barcode ticket, somebody find something, find my luggage. Cause that's right. Need my hair products. Need certain Uh, shampoo. I, I mean, come on. I need my hair products. Seriously, come on. By the way, you look like a floating head, like with the background. Yeah, like I know. What's screen, going on? The screen is just engulfing you more and more <laughs> as the show goes on. I'm losing my face or something like that. It's so yeah, weird to say. It's like hitting you a little bit. All right. Well, good job, D. You won. You won aviation trivia. Yes. Nice job. D one. Thank you. Thank you. D one. I'll try something. Another background. I don't know what the hell's going on over here, but this thing is driving me crazy. 
Let's see if this works. Nope, I'm still being covered by my head. This yeah. is the weirdest thing. What is it? I used to make fun of D with the floating head. I am a true floating <laughs> head right now. You literally are. I am a yeah. legit floating head. Is there, oh your shirt white? That's maybe that's why. That's why. No, it's it's yellow. Oh. But whatever. I don't, <laughs> that's it. Screw that. I'm going with the house view from now on. Oh, well, let's see the landline. Let's go. <laughs> All right, bring it on. Bring see, it on. You guys, nice, you guys have nice house views. That's why I need a background because I just have a white wall behind. <laughs> <laughs> just set up this way. Oh, okay. All right, we're back. Here we go. We got two more segments for you guys tonight. We got Matt Play a Player right now, and then we have our AFC Awards. Okay, this should be interesting. So Matt Play a Player this week, guys, is the four teams that had losing records last year that we think will have winning records in 2022. All right? So teams that had a losing record in 2021 that we think will have a winning record in 2022. Nikki, would you like to go first? Sure, I will go first. Thank you for adhering to ladies option. Absolutely. Yes, we are starting a new social trend here on the show. <laughs> ladies option. Okay, so I did my I just want to clarify like for me that was like teams that um you know, nine wins or more would be like a winning record. So, um okay. my number 4 is my homer pick, but given the Giants won four games last year, I do think that they can get to nine wins this year and that just comes from not don't accuse me of not being objective but that actually comes from the eye test and being around the team for so many weeks and seeing it with my own two eyes wow okay so nine wins for the giants that's a hard one for me to see but you know what i'm rooting for you all right so that's your number four okay what do you got for your number four uh my number four went with minnesota it's kind of a lazy pick because they went eight and nine <laughs> maybe they can go nine oh, eight that's this okay year. So oh, losing record. Yeah. Uh, but I think they can they can go nine and eight. New coach. That offense is still very good. Uh offensive line, not the best. Defense uh still kind of questionable. But because of the offense, I think they can win nine games. All right. I dig it. I dig it. I like that right there. And it certainly is a possibility. I will see if they get better, especially in defense. A new head coach comes to town. Mine's a little weird. This team was 7-10 and 10 last year, and nobody thinks they're going to do any good, especially with their new quarterback. But for some dumb reason, I think that defense is going to get back to where it was and they'll be able to score enough points and run the ball. And that's the commanders, guys. I think that the commanders can possibly pull off a 9-8 and eight record this year. I know it sounds crazy, but if that defense comes back to what they were two years ago, I can see it happening. So that's my number four. That is my four. Nikki, what do you got for three? Um, I have the Vikings at three for the record. My next the, after it's lazy after this. Yeah, no, I mean, because they just they're so annoying, right? They're so mediocre. Like they should not be that mediocre. It's such a talented team. So like you guys said, like D said, new head coach, you know, let's I think that they can yeah. get to a winning record this year. Well, let's see. Let's see if they can. All right, D, what about your number three team? My number three, uh, this team, I'm not picking them to do this, but they have a, a chance doing this because I think their quarterback's going to take a quantum leap. So I'm going with Jacksonville with a chance to maybe go nine and eight this year. Okay. Again, a chance, slim chance, <laughs> but maybe they'll go nine and eight this year. I thought you just right. have to clarify. I, I ain't predicting this shit, but I, I will give them a chance. It's quantum yeah. leaping it. Yep. I'm yeah. still waiting on mine just a little bit. Just waiting on my quantum leap. I've got a few guys in mind, but I got to still decide. But Trevor Lawrence is your guy. My number three team only won three games last year. And, yeah, I believe they're going to have a winning record this oh, year. Here we go. Yep. Are you following the hard knots? Are you here following the hard knots? Hard knots. You know what? Honestly, go. I have not watched one episode yet, but I'm going to watch. Why this isn't your number one? Wait, it's not my number one because, it, look, to go from three wins to get to at least nine wins is a big freaking difference. But – I do believe in this team, and I was talking about it way before freaking Hard Knocks obviously ever came out. I do like the Lions. I think that from 3-13-1 that they could possibly have a 9-8 record. I think that they will turn this season around big time. So that's my number three team, guys. I know Let that me not tell a you how real the Hard Knocks effect is. My wife, who's not a big football fan, like she, she watched the Saints with me, but she's not a huge like overall football fan. I'm watching yeah. Hard Knocks, and she's like, ooh. I'm going to root for Detroit this year. Like this right. is how, <laughs> like how big the hard knocks affect, especially because Dan Campbell seems like a really, really like cool coach that you want to play for. Yes. So with her having an athletic background, she's like, oh, he seems like a dope coach. Like he was, if he was my basketball coach, it'd be dope. Yeah. So now she's like, oh, Detroit's going to be my second team this year. 
So I think the hard knocks effect is going to take a lot of people and not you, Jay. Obviously, you were saying this before, but I think some people are going to fall for the hard knocks effect this year with Detroit for sure. I can't wait to watch her. She's the best. She is like one of the coolest people ever. Smart lady. Very smart lady. (laughs) I mean, I don't, again, sometimes I do question the intelligence because she did marry Damien, but then again, on the other <laughs> you guys the one bad together, though. They're so cute in person, but she is. So oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. I have no mm-hmm. doubt. I have absolutely no freaking doubt at all. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, I do like the Lions this year. Uh, I do. So that's my number three. Um, how about you, number two, Nikki? Uh, this is a super lazy pick, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> I have. Oh, what did I do? Oh, uh, Denver. I know. <laughs> it's like, but I and you know, Russell Wilson obviously is going to get yeah. them uh, to a winning record. Yeah, I mean, they're in a tough division. They're my number two team, also. They were seven and ten last year, so I can see them reversing that at ten and seven. Um, yeah. Again, definitely a tough division, so not the easiest pick. But I, I agree with her. That's my number two team, also. D, what about you? I struggled with Denver because of that division. I think they're going to finish last in the division, so they could be a good team that finishes eight and nine, just because mm-hmm. they're in that division. Sure. Uh, so that's why I didn't pick Denver, but I could definitely see I'm going over 500 as well. So I don't disagree with the pick. Uh, okay. My number two is a controversial pick. It depends on what's going on with the whole investigation. But Cleveland, Cleveland, All right. if John yeah. Watson is only suspended six games, I think this team finishes over 500 for sure. Like in the first six games, even without Deshaun, I think he can go four and two in those first six games. Uh, so this team is stacked everywhere. Running back. Uh, wide receiver not stacked, but they have some weapons there. Defense is really stacked. So I think that this team for sure can finish over 500 if Deshaun Watson plays a significant amount of the season. If it's only six games, then I definitely see that being a possibility. But anything more than that, then it could be tough. But, yeah, they're they're stacked all over the place. Um, I do believe right now that we all have the same number one. So you want to say it at the same time? All right? Yeah. I count of three. Three, two, one. One Baltimore Ravens. Ravens. There it is. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. They were eight and nine last year, guys. So they are legit. Obviously, been. What more do I have to say, D? Right? They're bringing all their guys back and more. Lamar Jackson. I, I don't know if you guys saw my recent uh, podcast, the Power Thirty Two podcast, but I was just glorifying Lamar Jackson of how important he is to that team. Maybe again, more important to any player on any team. Uh, Last year, I did not have him in the playoffs, and I kind of lucked out with that with my picks by them, again, getting hurt so much. But that can't happen again, right, Damian? They're going to get their guys back. They're going to be tough as hell. They're a great organization. Yeah, I've always, like, from last year, I was saying, this year, it can't be that bad. Like, just from just the law law of averages, they can't have another season where they have that many injuries. Uh, I always joke that they had all the stay-at-home dads playing running back last year. Like they can't, <laughs> they can't have another season that bad. So just because of that, they're going to be healthy. Lamar Jackson is going to want to bounce back this year because, to his standards, he had a bad year last year. He so did. He's going to want to bounce back. Uh, I think that they're going to be very, very good this year. Yeah, last year I think he went 16 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. But again, he was forcing a lot of stuff, trying to do everything by himself. But the year before that, I believe he had 20. Six touchdowns and nine picks, which is, is still pretty good. But again, he's not a guy who's going to throw for any more than thirty five hundred yards. But he doesn't have to. He makes it up with a thousand yards on the ground. You know. So, Nikki, I know that you're definitely high in Baltimore, also. Oh yeah, no, I um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, I uh, yeah, <laughs> I like that. You guys, yeah, it's just they they really. There's no way that a whole team gets hurt again, and he's yeah. so important to the Ravens, like. I hate when people, I don't know, you guys saw this debate on Twitter, like, oh, is Lamar Jackson overrated? And it's like, people say that because of his passing, right, and his accuracy, which I do think is getting better. But, like, we all saw what happened when he wasn't around for, what, six, six yes. weeks last year? Yes. Six, seven they weeks. Up, yeah, they blew He's it. So important to that team. And I would always argue, my argument will always be, the Ravens do not have a true number one wide receiver. Like, I would love to see yeah. Lamar Jackson with the true number one. So they he don't. is very important to that team. And I actually think he's slightly underrated because he gets so much hate. Yeah, I, he's, he's underrated because the people who didn't believe in him coming into the draft don't want to give up that argument. That's right. right. They don't want. They don't want to give the argument, and say that they were wrong about him coming in. You yep. had some people go real strong, say he should have been a receiver. So those people who went that strong against him, 
don't want to back up now and say, okay, the guy's an MVP quarterback now. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's all right to admit you were wrong about. Like, I was, I was wrong about certain things. It's okay, you know. Yeah. And, and he is an MVP quarterback. He won the MVP just a couple of years ago. Thirty-six touchdowns, yeah. six picks, and running the ball all over the place. And that brings us right into what we're about to do: the AFC awards. And the first one on the list is MVP. And Lamar Jackson, that's my guy. Again, I talked about it on the Power 32 podcast. If we're talking just AFC, and I might be talking the whole league, but I'm waiting to make my prediction, there is no more valuable player to any team than Lamar Jackson. As you could talk about Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, both fantastic. Obviously, the teams would not be as good without them, but Lamar Jackson is that offense. Are they too Lamar-centric? Sometimes, but that's only, again, where they don't have – enough wide receivers to throw to or good ones or their running backs are getting hurt, which happens so often. But if J.K. Dobbins comes in healthy, if Rashad Bateman could turn into something and go along with Mark Andrews and get a surprise out of one of the other kids, Lamar Jackson could have another great year. But again, when you just talk about valuable, how valuable a player is to a team, I can't think of anybody more valuable to their team than he is. No, nah, that's a that's a great pick. Like, I think what I always say about Lamar Jackson, a lot of quarterbacks are the engine – for the car of their team, Lamar Jackson's the car. Like everybody else gets in the car. Lamar Jackson is the actual car. Without him, there's no offense. No um, doubt. So I think that, yeah, you, that pick is great. And also the reason I thought about this topic as far as like having the AFC and MVC, NFC, excuse me, uh, awards is that I think the NFL should do this. I think they should do it like baseball has the AL and NL MVPs and all that stuff. I think- mm -hmm. That would be good. Like, there's no reason not to have an American or I keep saying American League, but the uh, I guess it is American <laughs> Conference, but the AFC and NFC awards for the NFL. I think that's something they should look at for sure. Uh, but my AFC MVP, I would go Josh Allen. Uh, Josh Allen, oh. I think it's going to have a monster year. Everything's set up for him to win. And they're going to be monster. If they're number one seed and they go like 14 and three or 15 and two, something crazy like that. And he has another crazy year where he has, let's say, 4,500 4, yards passing and 500 yards rushing with like 38 touchdowns, 10 picks. I can see him winning Oof. MVP for sure. Yeah, that sounds like MVP numbers. And he is the odds on favorite right now, even over Patrick Mahomes to win the MVP. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people do agree with you. And I, I can totally see that happening. That guy keeps getting better and better and better, no doubt. Uh, what about you, Nikki? Do you have a different one? I do. I have Justin Herbert. Herbert, okay. Mm. Yeah. I think right there. Yeah. Massive year is coming. Yeah. Yeah, he had a massive one last year. He's just going to probably expound upon it. He's going to yeah, get better I and better. So. Yeah. They're just going to keep He'll rolling. Better better. What about the offensive MVP? So, um, again, if it's the same as your MVP, that's fine. But offensive player in the AFC, what do you got, D? I went Jonathan Taylor. I think he's going to have a monster year. Uh, did predict he would lead the league in rushing earlier in the episode. So if he does that and the yeah. Colts are, you know, another division winner this year, I can see him getting offensive player of the year for sure. That makes sense. Your prediction's going hand in hand right, right there. Nikki, did you do the same thing? Uh, Jamar Chase. It's my boy right there. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, okay. Interesting. He's got the ability. There's no doubt. Um, I'm going to go with him. I'm going to go with a newcomer to the uh, American Football Conference, and that would be Devonte Adams. I talked about him before, as far as um, getting the most targets in the league and possibly catching most passes. Um, I'll go with Devonte Adams. I think he's in for like 1,700 yards, 15 touchdowns. I mean, some serious stuff right there. So I like Devonte Adams for offensive MVP. What about defensive MVP, Nikki? Oh, I didn't pick one. Oh, all right. You want then take a minute to think about it. What about did, did you come up with one? Yeah, I went TJ Watt, uh, all reliable. You... <laughs> oh, yeah, sure, <laughs> yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> yeah, I think he's gonna have another monster yeah. year with a bunch of sacks. Uh, if it's not him, maybe it's you know another all reliable. Well, TJ Watt's not old, but he's somebody who we know now. But yeah. an old reliable right. would be like a Von Miller in Buffalo. Maybe he has a, one of those turn turn back the clock type years in Buffalo, uh, mm. but. I think T.J. Watt is probably going to be the best if he's a player in the AFC. All right. I'm going to go with a guy who, if he stays healthy, and, Nikki, this is how much I love the Colts, Darius Leonard. I'm going to go with Darius Leonard. I think that he's a stat machine. He's going to fill it up. That defense is going to be tough. He's going to benefit from having um, 
you know, Yannick Ngakwe and DeForest Buckner in front of him, I think he's going to make a lot of great plays. So I like Leonard in that category for defensive MVP for the Indianapolis Colts. For rookie of the year, guys, um, I think, look, I think the Jets are going to start out with Michael Carter, but they're going to realize that Brees Hall has got way too much. He's such a good running back, and I think they're going to go with him, um, the Jets, a lot this year. And even if they do do dual running backs for a certain period of time, I think Brees Hall is going to be the rookie of the year in the AFC. And, well, the Jets, they could surprise a lot of people, especially if Zach Wilson takes a, a good progression and doesn't have a sophomore slump to him. Okay. No, I definitely can see that for sure. I went with Sky Moore. I think that the Chiefs are going to try right. to use him in a major way. Uh, I can see him. That's one of the reasons I didn't pick Chris Olave to lead the league in receiving yards for rookies because I think Sky uh, Moore is going to do it. You see, now that's interesting that you pick him, and I'm, it's very possible, but I feel like, all right, if they got McCole Hardman, Marcus Valdez-Scantling, Travis Kelsey, is he going to get enough touches? That's what I want. I think that's a, so. That's one of my fantasy takes. Is I might stay away from Travis Kelsey this year because they don't lo, no longer have Hill. Teams uh -huh. are going to be able to just just really lock in on stopping Travis Kelsey this year. And there were Travis Kelsey. It took a while for him to get started last year. They had to find different ways for him to get open. It couldn't just be no longer right. just place Travis Kelsey and let him run a route. They had to be creative to get him open. And now you have to be creative. And he's getting doubled. I can see Travis Kelsey maybe having a down year. I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. You see, I remember we talked about it last year. Uh, when Remember when they started bracketing Tyreek Hill early in the season and we were like, all right, can they win this way, the Chiefs? And it was we, – we all said, yeah, eventually, you know, they'll figure it out. And that's exactly what they did. They actually figured it out. Um, but that's maybe kind of the same kind of thing with Kelsey, which means other guys would have to step up. So, okay, I understand what you're saying. I do. I get it. All right. Um, Nikki, what about you? Did you have a rookie of the year? Sauce Gardner. He's got shut down corner all over him. Okay. Okay. I like look, looking at some New York Jets love over here. My goodness. All right. A little bit. Boys at work might be loving this right now. Uh, how about coach of the year? Who's going to be the coach of the year in the AFC? Damien, why don't you start? Jay, you're going to love my pick, Jay. Brandon Staley. Oh, no! I think the Chargers going to have a, uh, a great year, and he's going to be coach of the year. Everybody's going to be like, oh, my God, look at Brandon Staley no longer making dumb decisions. He's not going to be coach of the year for making great plays. He's going to be coach of the year for no longer doing dumb stuff. I think, I think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> That is funny, right? And on that merit alone, probably he stops making dumb plays. That is wonderful. I love it. What a great answer. That is great. Oh my God. Oh, Nikki, what about you? What do you think? Yeah, so it's funny. It's like coach of the year is always like very storyline driven, right? It's oftentimes like not the actual best coach on the best team. Uh so I think Doug Peterson's gonna get it. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a sneaky good pick. I like that. I like that. Because we all agree they will improve as a team. And Doug yeah. Peterson is one of them kind of quarterback whispers, you know, if you want to call that. But, yeah, no, I know. I kind of like that. It's a pretty good call right there. Um, I'm going to go with Nathaniel Hackett because, again, I'm really high on the Broncos. And I think that he'll bring that, that extra dynamic to that offense. And if they are what I think they're going to be, which is 10-11 win team and, you know, make it to the playoffs, then I think that he could possibly win it. We'll see. But I like that we all go with different people. Um, comeback player of the year. This one's tough. I, I had a lot of thinking to do with this one. I don't Nikki, did you come up with anything for a comeback player? J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins. I love it. I love it. All right. That's who I came up with, too. I went with J.K. Dobbins as well. I think that he's going to just destroy it this year. I mean, that guy was averaging like six yards a carry before he yep. got hurt. Yep. Right? All right. So I agree with you, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah, How about I you? I stayed in Baltimore, but I went with the quarterback, Lamar Jackson. Oh, that's a good one. That makes sense. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I should have gone with that. I mean, I picked him for MVP for Christ's sakes. So maybe I should have gone with that. <laughs> All right. Um, see, this one, I wish that I did tell you guys about this before as far as um, what categories. Again, we don't talk about anything. But we already know what Damien's quantum leap is for a quarterback in the AFC and maybe in the NFL in general. And that is Damien. That is Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence is this year from the AFC. Yeah. I'll pick an NFC one as well for next week. Yeah, yeah, we're doing. That's right. We're going to do NFC next week. Same categories, everything. So yeah, we're going to do that, uh, and that should be again a lot of fun. I love this idea. This is excellent. 
uh, to close out the show with. Nikki, I'll give me a second to think about it because I don't know if you came up with one. Um, I did, for, but for I did a category. team. Yeah, but I did a team. I didn't do a, okay. uh individual. But I did say Jacksonville because, like Dee said oh. earlier, uh, well, no, I really like Doug Peterson there. I think he's a good fit. I think Trevor Lawrence is really going to improve and grow and develop quickly. There you have a really good, like young, talented roster that defense can roll like they did a little bit, you know, last year. I don't love Evan Ingram. It's probably the one part of the team <laughs> that I'm really not mm -hmm. high on. Um, but I think if any team has a chance, they've, they got a really good shot. Okay, I dig it. I dig it. Um, I think you guys know where I'm going with my quantum leap. I've been alluding to it for the past couple of weeks over here, and that is Tua Tagovailoa. He is my quantum leap quarterback. Oh. He's going to throw for a lot more yards, not a lot of picks. And, uh, yeah, again, he won't be necessarily throwing bombs all over the place every game, but he will be throwing the ball down the field more often. So I like Tua to be that quantum leap guy in the AFC. Definitely. I do. Money Mitch. All right. How to pick a quarterback. Money Mitch. Quarterback. Money Mitch. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> if, Trubisky, if Trubisky takes a quantum leap, this will be the prediction of the year for sure. Yeah. That would be amazing. <laughs> That's my quarterback. There you go. Since I picked a team, I'll pick the quarterback. Money Mitch. Quantum leap. That would be interesting because I, you know, I'll tell you, I, and I think that he's going to be the starting quarterback. I really do. But Kenny Pickett, yeah. I'm hearing really good things out of uh, camp yeah. that he's yeah, he doing looked, really he good pretty good in preseason, in the first preseason yeah. game. Yeah, he's playing I mean, he did stringers, play but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. All right, we got to do a team that's going to take a step back and one that's going to take a step forward. Who's going to take a step? Back a little Paul Abdul take two steps forward. I take two steps back. Uh, the Bengals for me. I'm sorry, but um, I think in a way they what? caught lightning last year. Yep, I think the Bengals take, the Bengals a, step take a step back. Yep, in the it, for a while I was thinking they'll probably win this division, but the more I thought about it, I like Baltimore, I like Pittsburgh, I like Cleveland. It's going to be tough. And Cincinnati, yeah, they were 10 and 7 last year, they just eked out a win against the Las Vegas Raiders, wherever they play now, the Las Vegas Raiders in that first game. And, yeah, they did go to the Super Bowl. Don't get me wrong. And they were right there in the fourth quarter. But they completely overachieved defensively. All they did this offseason was, you know, help out the offensive line, which they definitely needed to do. Don't get me wrong. But I don't know if that's going to fix yeah. everything. Yeah. You, what, so, you like Cleveland over Cincinnati? I didn't say that. I just think that Cincinnati is going to take a step back. I think as opposed to ten and seven, they could be more of like a eight and nine team. No freaking you know? way! Wow. Eight and nine. Okay. Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. They fix the offensive line, which is the, he's like, oh, all they did. That was the most important <laughs> piece for them no. to freaking fix. I did say it was important. It, it was important. Eight and nine. Uh, and but you know, I how feel many like teams do you think Cleveland's going to win? Uh, Cleveland's probably a seven win team this year. Because there Deshaun no Watson is going to be out for a while. Of a step back. So where, like, right. where do you have Pittsburgh then? Nine wins. I have Pittsburgh. Right. I have Pittsburgh second and Baltimore first. Oh. There's oh, no I'm ready. Yeah. This is yeah. no. There's no way. Yep. Yeah. Nah, we'll I I am the prophet. I am the sports prophet. You guys will see <laughs> when two is kicking butt. The Lions are making a name for themselves. And hopefully, getting into the playoffs. And now with this uh, action over here. I'm telling you guys, I think the Bengals are going to take a step back. I think that, again, yeah. they caught lightning in a bottle. Baltimore was banged up. Pittsburgh was a whatever team. Cleveland had Baker freaking Mayfield. I, look, they, they, got, they got a little lucky. And don't forget, they had this game against San Diego. Uh, San Diego, listen to me. The Chargers. I mean, a whole bunch of points were scored in that game. They let up a bunch of points in other games. I don't know. I don't trust that defense, guys. So, we'll see. But, all right, that's my okay. – yeah, as crazy as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, I got Kansas City taking a step back. So do I. Okay, yell at him. Yell at him. <laughs> yell at him. <laughs> no, I agree with him. I and I said it last week because I think Tyree Kill covered up and bailed out Mahomes more than people want to admit. So I said there. Wow, bailed out Mahomes. Okay. okay, okay. All right, look, Tyree Kill is a significant loss. Don't get me wrong. I'm with you guys on that, but. Are you going to tell me that Patrick Mahomes is not the best quarterback in the NFL anymore because Tyree Kill isn't there? No, I didn't say no. he wasn't good. Okay. I just said that he covered up a lot. Uh, you know, he bailed him out a few times, and I think it is significant. That's loss. fair. That, that That is true. That is true. I mean, there are times that play breaks down and you have a Tyree Kill running around, but 
You know, that's why they went and got Scantling and McCall Hardman they held on to because they're guys who can make plays down the field as well. And I just think that Patrick Mahomes is that freaking good where he's going to make anybody look good. So he, he made Byron Pringle look good, and now he's in freaking Chicago or Detroit or wherever the hell he's playing right now. I don't even know. Somewhere in the NFC North. But so you both that, like you both think he has Yeah, I think they're going to take a step back because of what Nikki mentioned. Also, I don't trust that defense. That defense no longer right. having Tyron Matthew. I think that that's going to be a big loss as well. Uh, so that defense alongside Tyreek Hill no longer being there. I got them still making the playoffs. We'll get into that, you know, a couple of weeks when we do our full predictions. But I do have them taking a step back. You know, what they went twelve and five last year. I can see them going ten and seven this year. All right. Well, all right. Did that, how, how much of a real step back is that? Guy? I mean, all right. So they lose a couple of more games, but they still make the playoffs. I mean, that's not that significant. But, so you still they're going to be good. A, yeah, it's a big thing though, as far as going into the playoffs as a six or seven seed compared yeah. to being one of the top teams, being a Super sure. Bowl favorite. Okay, yeah. okay. that's fair. That's fair. All right. All right. How about a step forward? Nikki, last category. Who's going to take a step forward? Which team is going to take the biggest step forward? Well, I already in the said East? Jacksonville. So. so Jack, okay. Yeah, and we, we all like Jacksonville, no doubt. D, is that your answer too? Biggest step forward? You also put Baltimore in there. Like it's – yeah, we kind of talked about all those teams earlier. But, yeah, Jacksonville, Baltimore, my two teams, I think, are going to take those right. steps forward. No doubt. Yeah, well, I mentioned Nathaniel Hackett is coach of the year, so I think the Broncos take a big step forward. They were seven and ten last year. I, again, I see them possibly reversing that record. So I think that the Broncos take a real big step forward, get into the playoffs. But we'll make all those predictions later, how far they'll go and whatnot, and if you guys even agree. So yeah, a lot of NFL talk tonight. So next week we got to do NFC. We're going to do all these categories for the NFC. Um, maybe some more true or false in there. I mean, who knows what we're going to come up with again. We just kind of like text each other on Sunday or Monday and say, you want to do this? Okay. That sounds great. (laughs) So we'll just do whatever we feel like doing. It'll happen. It'll happen. But, um, other than that, we always have a lot of action going on. 33 podcasts every Wednesday night, seven o'clock. And guys, I'm really stoked about calling this game. I know we're about three weeks away from it, but I cannot wait to call this game, and I can't wait to hear what comes out of our mouths. It's going to be hysterical. <laughs> yes. Now, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for not only that game, but then you know, calling the rest of the games during the year. Maybe we'll do all the yes. Thursday night games. We haven't decided the schedule yet. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's going to be really, really fun calling the games with you guys. I just can imagine when we get a Giants game with Nikki, how much fun that's going to be. Oh, uh, my God. We're definitely going to try our best to do San Francisco versus New Orleans for sure. So Nikki could laugh at me and Jason going crazy. Yes. Uh, yes. So, <laughs> so we'll definitely try to get that one. But it's going to be a lot of fun, man. We're going to do a lot of games this year. I don't know why I didn't think about this idea like way before. Where we should. I know. <laughs> I know. I know. Which one of you guys thought about this idea? It wasn't me. Who, who thought it about me this on idea? The show, like, it literally came to me like on the show. I was like, oh, we should call the game. And they were like, oh, okay, yeah, we should. Such a good idea. I'm so sorry. All magic happens, folks. This is where all the good ideas happen. That's bigger uh, outlets steal from us. I freaking love it. It's beautiful. Wow. Uh, Man, anyway, um, yeah, let me give you guys a quick rundown. You guys are busy. I'm trying to keep busy also. On Monday, I did uh, the Power 32 podcast with Derek Havens. We did uh, AFC East. He's a big Patriots guy on 4th and two his podcast is called fourth and two and they've actually had it for a while i'm like you know where'd you guys get the name from so if you remember when they played the cults back in 2009 and the oh, patriots were yeah. fourth and two so that's where they got the name from I'm like oh you know we're third and three obviously so we had a little fun with that um nick ficarelli he made his comeback so i went on a show at like freaking midnight on monday but that was fun did some uh nfl mvp yesterday in power 32 of course we got wednesday night third and three podcast um, tomorrow I'm doing a fantasy blowout with Fantasy Central 1. Micah Henry is going to come on, so we're going to do some fantasy. I got L.A. Broadus coming on Friday. We're going to talk about the AFC North. And on Sunday, we're having a huge mock draft, which is going to be awesome. There's going to be 10 of us. We're doing a mock draft. We're going to do it live. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. And then on Monday, it never stops, but... Mike Patton's going to be in the house. C. Lou's going to be in the house. P. Sharkey's going to be in the house. We're going to do some AFC, South Talk, and NFL Talk. So my schedule is packed, guys. I'm trying to be like you over here. Nikki, I'm I'm trying to keep up, girl. (laughs) Hey, doing a good job. You're going to have to make a schedule like I do so you can keep track of 
where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to uh, be doing because I, I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Uh, yeah. Like I said, I jumped on JC talk sports podcast last week. That was fun. Thank you to all the Eagles fans who were kind to me. We were cordial to each other. So that was fun. <laughs> I did the TSS auction fantasy show on Monday night. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but my normal schedule, of course, training camp Tuesdays, New York Giants rush every other Tuesday, eight o'clock, of course, here on Wednesday nights and channel side sports. I have a fantasy football show coming out every Sunday morning, 1130 to 1230 uh, with two other co-hosts. So stay tuned for that. And there may be some really big news announced next week. Uh, so stay tuned. Oh boy, look at this with the teaser and the cliffhanger. She's learning from below yeah. deck. It's amazing. I, am. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fantastic. All right, D, what's going on lately with you, bro? Uh, so, yeah, with me, the real deal with Damian Adams, you can catch each and every week. I normally drop that either Sunday night or Monday morning. Uh, during football season, I probably continue to do the same thing and do it right after Sunday night football. Uh, and you can catch that podcast wherever you listen to this podcast at. Go ahead and subscribe and keep that good content in your life. It keeps your blood pressure down. Whenever yeah. Nikki listens to my podcast and then does this podcast, she's in a much better mood. She's way yeah. calmer. Right. <laughs> it's, it, keeps, it keeps her in a good mood. So make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to my podcast. I'm going to be a guest on Urban Sports Scene tomorrow uh, talking boxing. There's a big boxing match this weekend between oh. Alexander Usyk and Anthony Joshua. So I'll be on there talking about that. I did write a preview article for that fight on 33podcast.com. So go ahead and check that out as well. Uh, my football articles, well, the Saints articles in particular, will be on gridironheroics.com. I recently wrote one about Michael Thomas and uh, basically saying, let me reintroduce you to Michael Thomas and remind people of how good Michael Thomas was pre-injury. Uh, so you can check that out on gridironheroics.com. But just follow me and you'll get access to everything because there's a lot to remember. I don't Real expect you to bet. write it down. Yes, That's real right. deal bets. I do. <laughs> Thank you, Nikki. I do real deal bets usually every day. Uh, yeah. So most recently, I did Chicago Bears over under this morning. I'll be doing, I believe, Denver tomorrow. I'm skipping over Cleveland for obvious reasons because we don't know where their quarterback is going to be. But <laughs> I'll be doing ABC order, and I'll be probably doing two videos a day so I can catch up and make sure I finish it before the season starts. Uh, so go ahead and follow me at the Real Deal WDA, and you'll get the Real Deal bets. You'll get the articles. You'll get the podcast. You'll get all access to everything. So just follow me. The real deal, W as in whiskey, D as in Delta, A as in Alpha on all social media platforms. No. And all our content is free. We don't charge you guys yeah. for all this great content. <laughs> That's right. It's a beautiful thing. What more could you ask for? Third and three, we're giving it to you all every Wednesday night. Oh, we got so much great stuff coming up. We're going to make all our Third and three, giving it to you for free. That's it. Third and three, oh. giving it to you. Look at this. We got a little rhyme over here. I love hey. it. Oh, MC, MC Nikki Nick. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. My marketing side coming out, yes. <laughs> All right, third three podcasts. We're out for now. We'll leave you with this. It's a beautiful thing. Have a good one, guys. We'll check you next time. Bye. Peace. Yesterday's price. It's not today's price. Give me a second. I'm trying to select the appropriate weapon. Uh, watch where you stepping. Them snakes all around. You know they connected. Uh, when I was a kid, my grandmama told me I can't go to heaven. So I stopped praying and asking for blessings and started preparing for my Armageddon. Got nothing to lose. I'm all in. Walking the edge. Don't fall in. Enough of the lies. Don't apologize. I don't understand. Are you foreign? This is the place. This is the site. Grab all your people and log in. I'm waiting. Don't care how long it's going to take.